Good morning. Pastor Sean here on, what is it? Friday, Friday, July 3rd. And this is your morning prayer for the day. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light, and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Our text for today comes from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey, and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made clean do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. And a spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the mound's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on, just on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God and saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. In many and various ways that God spoke to his people bold by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. All right, so we have a recap, kind of a conclusion of what's been going on this whole week in our text. And how um, when the circumcision party, the people who believed that to become fully Christian, you had to be circumcised, basically you had to become a Jew to become a Christian. Uh, they hear what Peter had done, that he, he met and ate with, uh, with Gentiles, and they're upset. So he explains to them what happened and shows them what God did. And they say, okay, well, then to Gentiles, God has granted repentance uh, that leads to life. Awesome. So... Um, this is a it's, it's a good message for us in general. Um, kind of a... We have to be careful with the message, I guess. <laughs> because often we want to make it say something that's not saying. Because what it's saying is like, you know, you, you, there are no unclean people based on whatever criteria. So you can't look at somebody based on their... Um, well, anything, you know, <laughs> based on their... Um, physical characteristics, you know, if it's a racial component, if it's a uh, economic component, if it's a whatever, or on account of their their sinfulness, you know, everyone, God's gift of forgiveness goes out to everyone, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world. So everybody is, um, should be brought into the church so they may hear the gospel message. Um to be forgiven of their sins, be granted everlasting life, to be filled with the Spirit, to then um, walk in God's ways. So that's that's definitely the lesson that every church could always stand to hear again and again, because we're sinners, you know, and, and we, we like who we like, we don't like who we don't like. <laughs> and too often that becomes, um, you know, the, the, uh, we build up barriers at church 
which is never good. So great lesson there, um, where we we might be tempted to make some false equivalencies here, or or not um, quite catch. Is like you know you've you've got your um, your churches that. I mean, in my view, you've got three different kinds of churches. You've got a church that is very staunch in that, you know, basically this is not a church for sinners. And if you are going to come here, you must change your life and have evidence of that. Okay. You've got a church that says we are all sinners, we're all forgiven, and we all join together and strive to keep from sin, you know, to, to live according to God's law, understanding that we fail and that we need to seek repentance and we call upon each other and we, we, we look after each other and try to keep ourselves whatever. But there's no like necessarily condemnation except in extreme cases. Um, this is kind of the middle, middle road. The other road would be a church that doesn't care about any kind of sin. Like, okay, yes, you're a sinner, you're forgiven, and now it, it doesn't matter that you're still a sinner. Like you keep on going with whatever because you know we're we're very all inclusive we accept everybody so continue on in your sin and we bless it we bless your sin essentially so you've got two well you've got two on the the extreme kind of poles and then one's right in the middle and where i see us is you know <laughs> right in the middle is where we strive for because on one hand you you can't glorify sin you can't say well just because you're forgiven we can continue in sin i mean Paul has some pretty pointed words about that, <laughs> you know, that we've encountered grace. Are we to continue in sin? By no means. Um, however, on the other side, you've got um, extremely um, harsh churches that expect more from, and usually, I mean, it's because they, they only allow in the sins that they like, that they that they can wrap their heads around because the, the churches who will exclude you on account of your sin you know, it's, they've got their own sins. <laughs> so they've got the sins that they're okay with. And if you come in from the outside with your, with a different one, then they're like, nope, sorry, you've got to change that. So the difficult middle road is where we walk. Um, and difficult because it's, well, I mean, it's difficult and it's, it's hard for everybody because um, you have to look at it in terms of, well, you can't be a hypocrite and say, well, you have to be perfect to come here. So stop sinning. Well, <laughs> you better check yourself first. Uh, so there's that. However, we also can't glorify um, um, sin by saying, you know what? Just as you are, you're fine. Like, you know, God accepts us just as we are. See, that's not really a good thing to say. God accepts us in spite of the way we are. <laughs> that's a little bit more accurate. I mean, I am very much, you know, God accepts me in spite of my sin. Um, he, he forgives it and calls me to strive to avoid my sin. Um, but you know, I daily fail and I daily need to repent. And so that is the call for everybody, regardless of their sin, regardless of what sin is their kind of thing. Um, it's just, we're all called to repentance and to, um, to live on this kind of middle ground, which is it's, it's, there's always a tension. Um, and, uh, it's, it's not, it's not something that's just easy. So I figure if, if you go to a church that, that proclaims like, oh, we figured it out. You know, we, we know exactly how to do this. Those are the churches I'm like, really? <laughs> I mean, the answer is always Jesus, right? So there's that. But um, well, anytime you get people involved, that's where things get messy. Um, so uh, it's always a striving to walk in the ways of God. You know, we always try our best, knowing that we always fail, knowing that we are always forgiven, but that does not keep us from trying. You know, we still must must continue on down this road. So this this text here is is really good for us um, to, on one hand, put a, a reminder in our head like we cannot keep people away. You know, we we cannot build up these false barriers based on whatever criteria. You know, we we need to accept all people. But in the same way, we, we also have to remember, like, but it has to be according to God's word. Because, like, the circumcision party was very, like, we cannot allow people, you know, Gentiles, because they're not circumcised. So what did Peter do? He gave them God's word and said, this is what God says. And the circumcision, the circumcision party said, okay. <laughs> they deferred to God's word, um, even so they were able to set aside their personal, like, well, uh, this is not what I think, but this is what God says. And they said, okay. 
that's how we'll, that's how we're going to do this um and that's how we always strive that's you know it's we're we love people we love and serve our neighbor uh we bring them the gospel of forgiveness we all strive to live a life according to god's will according to his law according to everything so not easy <laughs> by any stretch um and there's i mean there's so much that can be said about this but you know in a span of 10 minutes that's that's what we got so if you if you want to talk more about that email me uh let me know so let us pray oh lord our heavenly father almighty and everlasting god you've safely brought us to the beginning of this day defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight through jesus christ your son our lord who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever amen Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty, merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, blessings to you on this day, and as you approach this uh, holiday weekend, I hope that, uh, um, well, I guess it's just the third day, so I'll save all my be careful and be safe out there until tomorrow. <laughs> until then, peace be with you.